Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again. We're going to talk about refilling and refilling printer cartridges that allow you to do that. And we prefer that every single time compared to say third party refillable equivalents, especially when it comes to Canon printers. So the most popular printer probably in the world at this point, the Pro 100, which was replaced by the Pro 200 this past year allows us to do that but it requires that you modify the cartridge by basically doing a little bit of an operation a surgical uh, procedure if you will you remove the factory fill ball and then you drill that seat to 5 30 seconds of an inch so that you can then use a plug to seal that chamber after you refill the cartridge well that again it may scare some people from doing so, but for a while it was really the only option that we had. And it's relatively easy to do once you get it performed and you did it correctly and you have a good sealing plug, you can just refill in a matter of basically half a minute you can refill one cartridge after you reset it of course. The only catch is that for you to be able to continue to refill the same cartridge, you have to be very careful as to how you approach refilling and specifically when do you do it. You have to do it before the low warning takes place. And the reason being is that the liquid chamber contains a molded prism through which a little light beam passes through and whenever there is liquid above that prism that beam is not disturbed at all but once that prism begins to become exposed to air meaning that the liquid level of the ink drops allows the prism to emerge and that diverts the angle that little light beam travels through i guess and that triggers the low warning by that time it's almost imperative that you better refill that card because what happens is that the sponge side is basically composed of a pad of fibers. These fibers allow ink to permeate by capillary action and that is what maintains that, that chamber f to a certain saturation level which then provides the printhead with the proper level of ink flow. If you allow air, meaning that you ran out of ink in your liquid chamber, and now air is beginning to infiltrate those fibers, when you try to refill again the next time, you may not be able to displace those little air bubbles here and there. Those little air pockets will become impossible for you to be able to displace because it is a very passive filling method. Ink just gently comes into the sponge and is not going to push any trapped air. As you perform this over and over and over, you'll end up with more air than ink in your sponge. At that point, the only option is to reprocess the cartridge, meaning you're going to have to reflush it, maybe rejuvenate it using the rejuvenation solution, and then let it dry after you drain the water out, the solution out, let it dry and begin again. Well, a second method, of course, if you have watched me talk about this for a while, and the last three videos that I uploaded contain the whole process of how to do the vacuum filling of these cartridges. Now, I am not saying by any means that one method is better than the other method. The simple, easy to refill method is, of course, top filling. But you got to be careful. You have to maintain that practice of always refilling, resetting, and refilling the cartridge before the low warning. Catch it before, that way you can be ensured you still have enough ink in the liquid chamber. And if you had liquid, air did not get in, right? And that's what you're trying to avoid, like the plague. Okay, so we have several products from Rudy Hallamum, and one of the, my favorites is this little CLI 
42 holder. Basically, it holds all my eight cartridges. It is identifiable right here with the code for each color. I can use this to refill, top fill all my cartridges and keep everything well organized. That gives me a third or even a fourth hand. Sometimes it takes that many hands to do this properly. You would remove one plug, add the ink, and plug it up. And the next one, and the next one, and the next one. However, if you take a very close look, you will notice only one cartridge has a plug, and that is the yellow one. At that point, we were still believing that the yellow OEM cartridge may react with third-party yellow ink and cause a sort of a gelling effect, which would clog the yellow channel on your printhead if allowed to get in there. Now, lately, though, Precision Colors has been saying that it has tried till tomorrow to try to create that reaction with the new ink set. All of the colors were actually changed. And the yellow one that he is using seems to not react with OEM. But you do that at your own risk. I am not telling you not to flush your yellow cartridge anymore. You continue to do that if you want to be extremely safe. But supposedly it is no longer an issue. Now, in order to perform this vacuum filling operation, it's a lot more involved than simply removing a plug after you reset the cartridge and adding ink and putting the plug back on it. That takes basically seconds to do, especially if you're using little bottles with needles on them. Very, very easy. To be able to do this vacuum refilling, you need this contraption right here. And this is being offered by Rudy. You saw me use it on my videos. Again, it works, it works, it works. It takes a little bit longer. It takes a little bit more effort to prepare your workflow, if you will, so that you do this properly. It will actually allow you to also explode and remove any air that may have been trapped in your sponge as long as the cartridge has not been drilled in other words it has to be pristine virgin you use it once till it's empty you reset it with what this puppy right here and install it like you saw in my videos add the 10 milliliters of ink here 10 it's enough, folks, so you want to only add 10 so that you do not overflow, overfill the cartridge. That can happen. There are ways to repair that error, but you don't want to ever have to do that. It's just not, it's not fun. You might as well make this a fun process. Add only 10. You basically install everything. You are creating a situation where you're going to develop vacuum here, which then will transfer to the cartridge, you suck out all the air, you will see the bubbles forming here as you remove, evacuate the air from the cartridge. When you let go of the plunger right here, the plunger will retract because there's a vacuum created and ink will be allowed to enter the cartridge. It takes one or two pulls and that is it. After that, you carefully remove this by unscrewing it. Everything is lured, type fit, and then remove the cartridge Remove the special clip, add your own clip that you should be buying, and you are done. That cartridge is ready to be used. Now, today I received a box from Rudy, and in this box he has something new that he has been working on. I finally sent him a PGI 72 cartridge with which he was going to basically create a holder but he went a, a step or two further let me show you what the holders look like and this is kind of a generation after generation he kept trying 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 he wasn't satisfied until he reached the point where he actually sent me one that was sealed and packed ready to be shipped I think this is one of the first generations right here it did not have any kind of ID code Basically, we're just going to go ahead and pop one of these in here. Now, you will notice on the orange clip, there's a little bit of a notch right there. So, you're going to orient that notch 
for the front like so or so final location here pop it in place and there it is and it will not fall off to remove it you just pivot it and remove it like so it's a little tight but we want secureness here let's try another slot here again this is his first generation and he told me he wasn't satisfied with it I think it works just fine and we remove it and that's it you can go ahead and use it now for refilling this is not convenient this is convenient for you to store a whole set of 10 cartridges maybe you filled up two complete sets you have a third one in your printer for me that's what I normally have or you have a set in the printer and then another set that has been reset and filled fine let's look at the rest of the generations of this uh, little product that he came up with we'll put this here on the side this one is coated is color coded and the back end let's see it seems to be thinner I'm looking for any degree of flexibility we really don't want that we want nice stiffness so here let's attempt to attach one of these let's see this is a uh, PM so we will look for PM there's one here that he forgot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Which one is missing? He did not put code there. So let's go ahead and find PM right here. And let's see, how should I do this? I think like this. There you go. You got to kind of get the, the drift of how to do this. So basically it mounts like that. And then you pop it off like so. Well, then he made one with a complete front end. This one did not have, you see, it's just bare. This one has a complete front end, so let's go ahead and attach it like so. Oh, that fits a lot better. Very nice. And comes off just as easily. All right. So, then came this one. Again, another. This, these are the same thing, but in red so you I believe you would get a pair of these one white and one red now let's look at the one that he considers finished and it is packed like I said it's packed ready to go so I assume he is referring to something like this Let's see if there's any difference between these. I'm going to use all of these regardless. But the one that's going to be sold very likely is going to look like this. With the end wall included. Where the other one was just sort of exposed. That's what, that's what I suspect is in here. I have not opened it yet. But it looks that way according to the photograph on the top. This looks very uh, professionally packed, by the way, heat sealed. Let's go ahead and pop this in. Locate the notch for the clip. Pop it right in place like so. Oh, that fits really secure. That works. Let me try a couple more cartridges here. We have photo black, so let's look for photo black. Right here is photo black. And boom. And this one is PM. Again, another PM. Anyway, as you can see, this will hold, perfectly hold, 10 cartridges together, ready to go whenever you need to replace them. Like so. Boom. All right, now, let's talk about the little bit of uh, extra, extra um, gift we received here. And I am glad that he has been working hard on this. In designing this for our benefit to give us the best product that we can uh, expect 
and uh, <laughs> I experimented with this in the in the past. Let me give you a little bit of a background as to why this is going to be awesome. Unless you are working with your own cartridges and you are not silly enough to throw away that orange clip, the minute, say you had two sets of OEM cartridges and yellow runs out, you remove it, you put the clip on it, store it somewhere. You take your new one and you install it. That one that is stored will remain in good condition so long as that orange clip is kept in place. The bag internally there is a pleated ink bladder and it is controlled by a spring. It is a flat metallic spring. You can see it right here that's ink right there as much. Don't worry about that. You can see around the peripheral what looks like little circles. Underneath that are connections to the pleated bag and that spring keeps that bag at the proper level of pressure. Okay, as ink is being demanded by the printhead, that bag begins to collapse. Once it reaches empty, it is collapsed. You put this back on, it will remain collapsed. If you choose to then reset it and dribble fill it, it will then re-expand. You weigh it as you are filling it. You reach 32 grams. You squeeze the sides a little bit, make sure there's no air in there. If you get nothing but liquid, as you squeeze the side and when you let go, the liquid re-enters. You put the clip. You can store it in one of those little holders until you need it. Now. Here is what happens if you buy empties from eBay. They will quite often not come with that clip. And I have some in a bag somewhere in here that are just impossible to refill. Really they are. It takes rather than a minute, maybe 20, 30 minutes to refill. The bag has expanded because it was never sealed here at the ink port by that clip because the guy or gal threw it out thinking they would never need it and that's understandable a lot of people don't realize that these can be very valuable so what do you do you drop one or two drops and you squeeze the air inside that bag will ex be expelled and you will see foam on that sponge what does the sponge look like? It looks like this. That surface, it is a oval shape exit port and it's really is a fibrous or fibrous material. You will see air bubbling out. Allow that air to bubble out. You let go of the side, relax the pressure, add a few more drops and proceed to do that again. You will see more foam coming out over and over and over and over and over and over until you finally reach 32 grams and you may have expelled all the air out of that pleater bag. Not guaranteed, but you may have. Storage always in this orientation until you need to use them. That sponge, that rectangular oval shaped sponge has to be kept soaked. It cannot have any crustiness, any dried areas, nothing like that, that would impede the flow of ink. Okay? So even though these do not have to be modified, you still have to refill them the correct way. Now, what I did, and I believe there's a company in the UK, uh, octoink.co.uk, will sell you a clip that has a little lure lock adapter on it. You attach a syringe and you pull back, a syringe with nothing in it, and you pull back and collapse that bag. And now quickly remove this and begin adding ink. That will allow you to refill it a lot easier. Now the next time you refill that cartridge, you will not have that problem. Only that first time when the bag has been allowed to expand. So, you attach the syringe to the adapter, pull back, create a vacuum, the bag will collapse, 
At that point, you can then quickly remove everything and begin to refill. Or, or better yet, if you have like a 30 ml syringe, and the 30 ml syringe, if you pull back so the plunger is almost out, it's more than 30. So what you do is you load 15 ml of ink or 14 ml of ink in it, allow the ink to sit at the bottom, of course you're going to attach the, the syringe, pull back, all that air will be sucked out of that bag, the bag will collapse, let it rest a minute, and then manually inject the ink into the bag. 14 ml on an empty cartridge will fit perfectly, remove everything, remove the clip and add a few drops to get it up to 32 grams. Now, here's what we have now. After all that explanation, get ready for this. I haven't opened it yet. Another little present from Rudy. Let's go ahead and crack this open. This is beautifully packed, for ready for shipping. And what it is, a refilling system for the PGI 72s and of course this would also work for the Pro 300. Keep in mind that the Pro 300 has to be um, disabled. The chips have to be disabled for it to allow you to refill but this will give you um, a better method to refill let's just say. More precise. All right. Let's go ahead and, like I said, I have not opened this yet, so bear with me. It says here to pull, so we pull, and we have a holder here. I'm not going to do it because I need a perfectly clean, you know, a perfectly empty cartridge. But this would sit, let me pop this open. This would replace the orange clip. You attach it, then here, the whole unit. Simply it's just a holder. You attach a syringe with the proper amount of ink in it. Pull back to collapse the bag and allow the ink to enter. Wow, very simple. Now. If you are not super, super duper picky and you figure that 14 ml of ink is enough if you begin with a dead empty cartridge and you will know that when you pull back the syringe let me, let me just show you what all of this entails. Oh my goodness, this is completely beautifully packed. This will attach here you will add the ink required, 14 ml, attach a syringe to the top, like so, pull back, collapse the bag, there's a piece of tubing here as well, like so. This attaches to the syringe, this will have the ink in it, pull back, collapse the bag, inject the ink, that's it, remove this remove this, your cartridge is ready to be used. Wow! This is really going to revolutionize the way we refill these cartridges. No more drip method. Although if you love to do that, love to enjoy seeing the ink enter, and it doesn't really take that long. It doesn't require any extra paraphernalia like this. You're the uh, judge. You be the judge. As I say, choose your poison. Whichever way makes you feel safer or better, Again, two ways to do this from now on. So this will attach to the syringe directly to the lure end and you just simply pull back, collapse the bag and allow the ink to go in by pushing forward. That is all that it takes. It's going to be awesome. All right, so we're going to be doing an actual demonstration of this this coming week. And so I should have that before the end of the week this week. So. Should be a lot of fun. I'm going to go ahead and try it on a um, basically dried up cartridge. One of them that's beyond help. And we'll see whether that is able to solve that problem because it is a problem. All right, that is it for now. Thank you so much. 
Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. We got a lot of stuff to test this week. And on the next video, I'm going to talk about again. I'm going to go over the steps that you have to go through. I'm going to try to basically point by point walk you through refilling these cartridges, making the choice to finally disable the chip so you can print chipless, and how to use the ink level sensor system. Okay. This printer now is perfect, folks. Okay, it is my favorite. My favorite. All right, so thank you again. Happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.